Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is episode 4 of How to Survive EVE Online. In this episode, we are going to finish up the remainder of the industry and the business chains. Uh, it's been five hours or so since I recorded my last episode, and this is a history of all of the skills that I have trained thus far. By the way, uh, to pull up this history, you bring up your character sheet. You, that is, you go to the Neocom, you left-click on your face, you go to the Skills section, the History tab. And this will show you the skills that you have trained most recently. I think it only shows the past 20 or 25 or something like that. So this eventually this won't be a complete history of your skill training. Uh, but this, since I haven't trained all that many skills on this character so far, this, for now, is a complete history. By the way, as long as we're looking at the character sheet, you should go to the Settings tab, click Show All Skills, and personally I like to highlight partially trained skills, and go to the Skills tab, and you can see a complete list of all the skills in the game, whether or not you have trained them yet. All right. And I can right-click any section, like Mechanics here, open Group Window, and make it a big window, or I can merge it with a bigger window. And these are all the Mechanics skills that exist. These are all the Drone skills that exist. And you can show info on any of them, if you want to go exploring around on your own. But anyway, I've set that aside. I've also rearranged my skill training queue to train quicker skills first and longer skills afterwards. Just because. So I have slotted in here Afterburner 1, Targeting 1, Energy Systems Operation 1, Hull Upgrades 1. You can pause the video and take a look at the list if you wish. Let's go over to our Agents tab and start conversations with both the Industry and the Business Agent. And these windows appear in different places because I dragged them there previously. And both of these agents want us to take cargo to other s solar systems. All right, so what I am going to do, they both start off here in Clelamon. So I'm going to right click a drop off, one of the drop off locations, set destination. Right click another, select add waypoint. Okay. Uh, by the way, the difference between set destination and add waypoint is if you right click some sort of location and you select set destination, that wipes all of your current waypoints and sets it as your first waypoint. In this case, I tried to set my current station as a destination, so it just wiped the autopilot route completely. So that's the difference. So right, I could just as easily start off add waypoint. Right click, add waypoint. And then I want to come back here, so right click, add waypoint. And I'm moving a crate of electronic parts and an encoded data chip. Click accept, click accept. Close these windows. Crates of electronic parts, encoded data chip. Make sure these are inside your active cargo hold. If you're not sure, double click on your ship in the ship hangar. That opens up your cargo hold. We've got the cargo, let's undock. Now you'll probably notice that there's a long row of icons here on the left hand side. Let me warp to the Stargate. Right click, Stargate, Sluice, jump. That way I don't have to scroll down through this whole overview trying to find the Stargate. It's sorted by distance, so the most distant object should be at the bottom of the list. Of course, new things that appear on overview while I'm bouncing over the silly thing will be added to the bottom of the list. So, I've got a whole row of icons here, and these represent my route. All right. The hollow squares indicate the stations that I'm visiting and solid squares indicate the solar systems that I'm just simply passing through. Right? If I had set a solar system, an entire solar system rather than a station as my waypoint, it would appear as a little plus sign here. As a matter of fact, once this next jump is completed, I will demonstrate that. 
Uh, let's see. Our next system is Vey. The next system in round. So Stargate. Vey. Jump. I'm going to press F10 on my keyboard, which brings up the map. And last time I was looking at the map, I was looking at a solar system map. But I'm going to click up here for star map. And this... Oh, right. It's flattened. Left clicking and dragging just pans it back and forth. But I like an unflattened map, so I'm going to click unflatten. So this is the new Eden star cluster. And I gotta wait for my client to finish loading the next system. Let's see, next system in route, Sheenan's. Jump. So this is the new Eden star cluster. Every single one of those dots is a solar system. You can visit most of those solar systems with the exception of CCP employee-only regions like the Jove Empire. But all the rest of this, you can visit, assuming that you've survived the journey. And the default setting is to color the stars according to their security status. Now the security status dictate, hold on, let me get rid of this gigantic Verge vendor label. Star map tab, labels, sub tab, no, I do not want region names. All right, now, the security status of the system operates, uh, dictates the consequences of what happens in the cases of unprovoked aggression. Uh, next system in route, Juvit, left click, jump. All right, so brightly colored dots, at least when it's colored according to security status, are high security systems. Osmamon is 0.8, Clelanon is 0.8, uh, Adalier is 0.9, Sistavir is 1.0. Security status doesn't go any higher than 1.0. 0 0.5 and up are high security space. If another player shoots at you unprovoked, the Concord police will appear and destroy their ship. There is a delay time involved with this. The delay time is shorter in higher security systems like 0.9 and 1.0 it is slowest in 0 0.5 space where i believe the delay time is 15 seconds the last time that i tested it for myself 0.4 through 0.1 is low security space anyone who attacks you unprovoked in zero in low security space they will lose security status. They're going to be marked as a criminal by Concord, but the Concord police do not show up. If there are any nearby sentry guns near stargates or stations who happen to see a crime in progress, they will start shooting, but these are usually only a threat to small craft. Battle cruisers can usually tank gate gun and station gun damage. So, battle cruisers, battleships, capitals, they can shrug off station gun damage. They don't, they don't care. And it's not like station guns warp scramble anyway, so a criminal can just warp away from the guns any, in any event. So yeah, in low security, you can be attacked and destroyed unprovoked. Red systems, that's zero and below. And security status can range anywhere from positive one to negative one. So zero through negative one is null security. Hold on. I've arrived at my first station. Well, into my first destination system, anyway. So, zero through negative one is null security space. Anyone can still attack you unprovoked. Additionally, they're not even marked as a criminal. These are outside the bounds of zero and below is outside the bounds of Empire space. That is the territory of the Galente Federation, the Kaldari State, the Minmatar Republic, the Amar Empire, uh, the Amatar Mandate, the Kani Kingdom, and the Concord Assembly. Right. Collectively referred to as Empire Space. High security plus low security. So, out in null security, not only is there no Concord response, they're not even marked as a criminal. Right. So if somebody destroys your ship unprovoked in null security space and then jumps through a Stargate into high security space, Conquer doesn't care. They're not going to touch them. So be aware of that. 
Uh, I don't know which agent wanted this system, so let me start conversation with the industry agent. Okay, this is all green check marks, so I can complete the mission. If I had guessed wrong, one of these would be a yellow circle. For example, if I start conversation with the business agent, this would be a yellow circle, and I can't complete that mission. So that must not be the one I want to talk to. So complete mission. Close. Undock. Right. So high security space. Other players can, sh uh, other players cannot shoot at you without facing the wrath of Concord. They might shoot at you anyway. I believe I mentioned suicide gankers in the previous episode. So try not to carry anything too valuable on your ship. But you're, as long as you fly smart, you're usually okay in high security space. If you've decided to spend real money to buy a bunch of Plex pilot's license extensions, and then sell the Plex to other players in exchange for ISK, and then uh, blink, get an expensive ship and bling it out in expensive faction officer or dead space gear, and you start flying around carelessly, someone's going to decide that you're a juicy enough target. They will suicide gank you, Concord will blow them up, and the accomplice who never fired a shot will steal whatever bling survived in the wreckage. But as long as you fly smart, you should be okay in high security space. And also as long as you are not at war with anyone. Low and null security? It's every man and woman for themselves. You have to be careful. Right. So when you set a route, an autopilot route, your autopilot will try to set up a sensible route as short as possible while sticking to high security space as its default setting. If you click on the A symbol here, you'll see it says prefer safer. If you click prefer shorter, then it will plot a route with the fewest number of jumps, which might go through low security systems or null security systems, depending upon where you're asking it to go. For now, you should leave it on prefer safer, and it will plot the shortest route that stays within high security. To verify that your route is reasonably safe, you always want to take a look at the color icon of the color of the icons on the Stargate route. All right, so blue and green and yellow are high security. Blue, green, and yellow are fine. If it's orange or some orangish shade of red, that's low security, and if it's red, that's null security. So if you have any orange or red in your autopilot route, you need to pay attention. If it was not your intention to go into or through low or null security space, then you've got to double check your autopilot settings. Are you set to prefer safer? All right, do you have an avoidance list set? That is, if you go into manage route and you look at your avoidance list, are you avoiding any solar systems that might be in your way? Right? Are you avoiding systems where pod killing has recently occurred. Keep in mind that if a couple of capsular corporations or alliances are at war with each other, they may be killing each other's ships and pods in high security space as part of that war activity. In which case, your star, your autopilot might avoid those systems because quote unquote, pod killing has occurred. Right. By default, your autopilot should be prefer safer Avoid systems on your avoidance list. Disable autopilot at each waypoint. And this other checkbox should be off. I'd advise you to leave it on the default settings for now, but always make sure to double check the colors of the icons on your autopilot route. So yeah, it's a very big universe that you're entering. For this tutorial series, How to Survive EVE Online, we are only going to be going through a very small part of it, and even in the entire collection of videos that I personally make, or that EVE University as a whole makes, we're probably only going to be seeing a very small number of any of these solar systems in any of these videos. It's a very large universe. Those That's 5,000 tiny little dots out there that you can visit. It's a big place. Welcome to New Eden. 
I am now in the Chanis solar system, which mm -hmm. is where the business agent in this particular case wanted me to drop off his cargo. By the way, these destinations are randomized to some extent, so the stations that I visited in this video will probably not be the same stations that the tutorial agents ask you to visit to drop off this cargo. The other thing I wanted to point it out is that you always have a local channel. As long as you are in known space, that is, any solar system that has a stargate, uh, you can see a list of people who are in the same solar system as you, and that's in the local use and that's in the local user list here. So right now there are 13 capsuleers in local, and you can see their names here. You also get a, a, a total breakdown in whoever is in the solar system. So 13 capsuleers and zero infantry, which is to say zero Dust 514 players. See, start conversation, Blake Dementier, complete mission. And one of the rewards is an expanded cargo hold, which is now in my station hangar back in Clelanon. So it didn't appear here because this is not Clelanon. If I try to request the next mission, he is going to tell me, Sounds good, please stop by so we can formalize the mission contract. Most not all, but most agents are going to want you to return to them for the next mission. But anyway, to get back to my previous subject, uh, as long as you are in known space, the local user list will show you how many people are in local and who they are. If they are, if they are in, in the solar system, they will show up. If they are not in the solar system, they will not show up. This is a biconditional, it is always true. The only case I can think of where you would see somebody in space, but not in the local user list, in known space, is if they've gone link dead, if their internet connection has failed or something. Their ship hasn't despawned, but they're still floating there in space. By the way, if you go, if you disconnect while in space, usually your ship sticks around for one minute after you disconnect. If you've been fighting NPCs, you'll stick around for five minutes. If you've been fighting players, you'll stick around for 15 minutes, during which you can still be hunted down and killed. And if somebody starts attacking you during that time, the timer is refreshed. So somebody can keep you floating around in space indefinitely while you are flying. So be very wary of logging off in space. So, local is very useful for keeping an eye on who is in system with you. So I recommend keeping that separate as a different window and keeping an eye on it if you have reason to think that you're being hunted. Particularly useful in low and null security space. So mouse over the member list settings button. Ah, skill training complete. Targeting level one. So mouse over this button show compact member list okay. and if you only care about capsuleers in space you can also turn off show infantry you'll st still get a total count of dust 514 players who happen to be in that solar system uh, but you won't see their names cluttering up the list which can be very important if you care about who can hunt you down and cloned mercenaries who are walking around dirt side cannot hunt you down in space. At least in this version of EVE Online and Dust 514. I have absolutely no idea what CCP has planned for the future. Today is the 8th of June 2013, keep that in mind. CCP likes to make significant changes every six months. Alright, I am back in the Clelanon solar system. As you can see, there are now 406 capsuleers in Clelanon, and zero dust mercenaries. Alright, so that's a lot of people in Clelanon.
docking permission requested. Oh, I forgot to mention why I wanted you to get certain skills. Uh, the targeting skill... The last time I target locked anything, I target locked two things. And that's the most that I could do. As a new player, you can only target lock two things. The real limit is determined by a couple of factors. First of all, you have your ship's electronics. So in your fitting window under the targeting section, my imicus... Um, this is an imicus, right? My imicus can target lock up to four things. The, ele the electronics can support four. But that's one limit. The other limit is based on your skills. And your player skill limit for target locking things is two, plus your level in targeting, plus your level in multitasking. So if you max out both of those, then your skills as a player are two plus level five plus level five, or 12. Now, in my particular case, I have, what do I have targeting trained up to? Uh, level one, and I'm currently got level two queued up. So right now it's targeting level one. So my skill limit is three, my electronics limit is four. The game takes the lower of those two numbers, I can target lock three things. If I train up my skills a lot more, then, Let's say I trained up multitasking level 3 and targeting level 5. Then it's 2 plus 5 plus 3. My skills would allow me to target lock 10 things, but the ship's electronics have to support it. If I'm still flying an Imicus, then the electronics limit is still 4, so I can only target lock 4 things. So it's two limits. One is the electronics limit, the other is the skill limit. Whichever is lower, that's the one that the game imposes on you. So we're back in station. Uh, let me talk to these two agents again. Uh, and they both want items of various types. So the business agent wants us to get a tracking computer. He doesn't care where we get it from. He just cares that we get one for him. Ah, uh, yes, energy systems operation. 5% reduction in... Uh, you know what, I'll tell you about this energy systems operation later. So, the business agent wants me to get a tracking computer. So I can right-click the icon right there, view market details, and I can buy a tracking computer off the market. One other detail about the market that I didn't, uh, that I haven't explained yet. A lot of these, all of these things here, as a matter of fact, these are all player buy and sell orders. These are players who are buying things, these are players who are selling things. And the way you tell the difference is the expiry timer. If the market order expires in 90 days or less, it was set up by a player. With things like skill books, if the market order has 364 days left on it, it was set up by an NPC, by the game system. All right? So these are not most of these are not players selling a skill book. In this case, however, in Sheenan's 2, uh, some player is trying to sell 95 targeting skill books for well above price. I don't know why. Maybe they're hoping that nobody is checking other stations in the region. But anyway, this uh, sell order has 82 days left on it, so that was set up by a player. All of these others were set up by NPCs. Right. So going back to the... Where did I put that window? Going back to the targeting, to the tracking computer, these are all being sold by players. So I'm going to right click, buy this. There's one tracking computer. I can accept the mission. Uh, game throws text about you at the market. Uh, go ahead and read that uh, whenever is convenient for you. Uh, never buy anything that you cannot afford to lose. I think I mentioned that. And it throws a couple of new skill books at you. And done. Okay. So we can complete that mission. That's done. Let's go back to the industry agent. This ostensibly is another manufacturing job. All right. He wants 20 cap booster charges. 
and technically that's the only requirement for this mission. He will give us a blueprint for manufacturing them, and if we show info on it, we can see the bill of materials. We need mexilon, pyrite, and tritanium. Now I've got plenty of tritanium on hand. I don't happen to have any pyrite or mexilon. Pyrite comes from a few different, many different asteroid types, most notably scordite. Mexilon, I think you need to look for plagioclase or pyroxenes. So, if I wanted to, I could right-click any given mineral and just buy mexilon and pyrite from players who have mined it already, right? And then do the manufacturing job, or I could just. Uh, go out, look for those asteroid types, mine the asteroids myself, come back with the minerals, do the manufacturing job. We've done manufacturing before. Or the quickest way to do it, I'm just going to right click on the cap booster icon itself, view market details. He wants 20 cap booster 25s. So I can just right click uh, the order of a player who's selling these things and buy 20 of them. He wants 20, right? Right. That's only going to cost me 9,000 isk. I've got over a million isk. All right. So I'm just going to do this a quick way, buy the cap booster 25s, accept the mission, it's all green check marks, complete the mission, I'm done. Apparently there are quite a number of players out there who realized that new players like yourself are going to want to buy these things off the market and just move along quickly so they have so they've uh, have these for sale in bulk. And given the scale on which they operate, that actually makes them money. But if you want to manufacture it as practice for manufacturing, I've already led you through the steps of how to do that. Uh, it's just a question of where you're going to get the minerals from. So moving along, uh, all right, this is a courier mission. He wants us to drop this off at Luce. And he'll give us back the cargo in order to ship it over. Let me see what the next mission for the business chain is. Because uh, I'm pretty sure there's another courier mission coming up on the business chain. So we can take care of both courier missions at the same time again. And there will only one jump out this time. So the business agent wants me to go out to some place. Uh, does he want me to use... he wants me to use a relic analyzer. And he also wants me to shoot some Serpentus pirates and retrieve something for him. All right. And it's here in Clonlon, so I'm going to click Accept. Close. And this is going to involve multiple acceleration gates. So let me make sure I have all of the equipment that I need. By the way, one of the mission rewards was an afterburner and I completed the skill training for an afterburner, so let me attach that to my ship. All right. So I have the afterburner fit. If it says that you don't have the skill requirements, you are missing afterburner level one. All right. So I have the afterburner, I have my relic analyzer, I've got my armor repair, I've got my weapon. I'm all set. Uh, I can undock. Something was wrong with that ship model back in station. Anyway, balancing the books, warp. Warp drive active. Here we have the acceleration gate. Let's activate the gate. And just to remind you of the number of different ways by which I can activate a gate, I won't activate uh, any two gates with the same method this time.
Now, what does an afterburner do? This. Alright, not quite as impressive as I had hoped, but basically what it does is it increases my speed. I'm now going a lot faster. I'm moving up, I'm pushing um, 807 meters per second. Without it, I would only go 379. But twice as fast means that I can cover distance in half the time. Alright, I'm less than 2500 meters away from the Ancient Acceleration Gate, so I'm going to sit here and let the Corelli Initiates come to me. Alright, i got to wait for them to get within 2000 meters. Alright, there we go. F1 again. Again, I don't normally advise an Imicus for combat work, but these are pushover enemies. Uh, right click the wreck, open cargo, take everything. It's only worth a couple of thousand isk, but anyway. And activate the gate. and control R to reload. By the way, F1 through F8 will activate the given high slot module. Alt F1 through F8 or Option F1 through F8 if you are a fellow Mac, Mac user will turn on that given mid slot module and control F1 through F8 will activate the given low slot. All right, Corelli Initiate and the Ancient Ship Structure. I was expecting one more acceleration gate. Anyway. So, Alt F1 or Option F1 to turn on the afterburner because I want to get closer a little bit sooner. And Alt F1 again to turn it off. And it will continue running until the end of its cycle. Control spacebar to full stop and the ship will start slowing down. And let's start shooting the Corelli Initiates. All right, that one moved a little too far away. Let me shoot him. You know, let me approach this guy. Full stop. Now he wakes up. Right click. Let's loot the wreck. Loot everything. Alright. Alt F3 or Option F3 to use the Relic Analyzer on this ancient structure. Did they not in implement the hacking minigame for this? Yeah, that's strange. This mission is still using the old uh, analyzer mechanic. Hmm. I wonder if CCP's going to in fix that. Anyway, what you're seeing here is the old uh, archaeology or hacking mechanic, where you just let the module cycle until it succeeds, and then you just left-click on it, or right-click on it and open cargo, and loot everything. So that was the old archaeology mechanic. No minigame to hunt through there. Let's go back to station. All right, hold on, I'm bumping into things. Control space bar, turn my camera, double click into space off in that direction. All right, double click to change my velocity vector, and now I dock. That is how you clear an obstacle if you are bumping into it while trying to go to warp. Control R to reload.
Afterburners and micro warp drives also happen to be useful for covering that last two okay. kilometers whenever you drop out of warp two kilometers away from a station. Let's talk to the business agent. Everything's green check marks. We are done. Uh, I'm going to complete the mission and request the next mission. And this is also a courier mission going to Luce. So let's also talk to the industry agent. And we're going to accept and accept. Double click our ship in the hangar. Uh, let's get all the looted junk off of it. We need to move a central data core and 20 cap booster 25s. Close, close. Uh, hold on, I forgot to set destination, didn't I? Not to mention the fact that these are two different stations in Luce. Right click, add waypoint, right click, add waypoint, right click, add waypoint. Now I'm ready to undock. Yay for paying attention to mission details before you leave. Alright, uh, change the sort, put most distance objects at the top, find Luce, and jump. Station dock. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right. Uh, okay, I guess correctly. These are all green check marks. I can click complete mission. Close and dock. Go to the other station. Business agent, complete the mission, and the game will throw text at you about implants, and will give you a cybernetic skill book. Can I inject this right now? Yes, I can, because I have science level three. Excellent. So go ahead and inject that, and you should read through this, uh, but I will talk about that right now on the way back to Clonon. Now, I've mentioned before that skill training is the slowest process in EVE Online. Right? Uh, if you 
If you show info on whatever skill you're training and you go to the Attributes tab, you'll see that it has a primary and a secondary attribute. Energy Grid Upgrades, for example, is Intelligence and Memory. The rate you need a certain number of skill points to train up Energy Grid Upgrades. So in this case, to get that to from level 0 to level 1, I need 500 skill points total, and I'm currently at 41, 42. How quickly am I doing this? Well, with any skill, it's your primary attribute plus half of your secondary attribute in skill points per minute. Uh, open up your character sheet. Uh, let's go to the overview and dock at the station. Go back to your character sheet. Uh, the attributes section. Your intellect, your intelligence is 20. Your memory is also 20. So energy grid upgrades, you are training at a rate of 20 plus half of 20. In other words, 20 plus 10 or 30 skill points per minute. So I have 62 skill points in it right now, and if I wait another minute, I will have 92 skill points. Wait another minute, it's going to be 122 skill points, and so on and so forth. That's how it arrives at the calculation that energy grid upgrades here is going to take 14 minutes. The next level of energy grid upgrades is going to take a lot more skill points. That will be 1 hour 17 minutes, and... If I slot it in a third time, it's going to take 7 hours, 19 minutes. All right. So that's how that calculation is done. There are implants that will increase the rate at which you train skills, namely by increasing these attributes. You were just given a limited social adaptation chip. It increases your charisma by 1. So any skills that require charisma will train faster. These are usually skills in the leadership category, social category, and trade category, though there are some exceptions. Right. A lot of spaceship and weaponry skills rely on perception willpower. A lot of your support skills, which you use for defensive stuff, uh, rely on intelligence memory. Your navigation skills uh, which help you to go faster and in the more advanced levels allow you to use the jump drives on capital vessels uh, typically require intelligence perception. Right? So your combination of attributes affects the rate at which you train various different skills. Right? Uh, these learning implants go as high as plus five. So I could have plus 5 implants for everything, and instead of 20s and a 19, I could have 25s and a 24. Keep in mind, though, those are very expensive implants. Once you've plugged an implant into your head, the only way to take it out is to destroy it. So if you need to swap implants for any reason on that particular body, you would have to destroy the implant. Interested readers will want to look up information about jump clones, but I will not cover that here. Uh, let's talk to the two agents again, see what their requests are. All right, business agent wants a couple of one mega newton afterburners. I happen to have one to spare, and I've got one fitted, but I don't want to get rid of these. So instead, what I will do is right-click, view market details, and oh look, there are afterburners for sale. Uh, there's one for sale here, and another one for sale here, from a different person. Now I have the afterburners I need. I can accept this mission. Complete the mission. See what he wants next. Alright. Uh, ostensibly, the business agent... Uh, is going to have you manufacture antimatter charges. Again, like with the cap booster charges, you could actually take the blueprint copy and see what it, you need to manufacture this stuff. You would need quite a lot of titanium because you're going to need to run this for 50 runs. The mineral quantities here are for one run. If you want to do this mission by actually manufacturing, multiply these numbers by 50. So you need... Uh, Let's see, accessories, calculator, 248 times 50, 12,400 titanium. 
I've got about half that. So if you want to actually manufacture this stuff, you would have to either hunt down the minerals and mine them yourself, or more conveniently, you can right-click and view market details, buy them off the market. That's probably a lot easier and much better use of your time and money. Time is money, keep that in mind. Or I can just right-click on the market and... Let's see... So the lowest price in the region is 29 isk per unit. Uh, in station, there are 5,000 for sale. Uh, let's see, if I buy out this order completely, that's going to be about 86,000 isk. How much do I have? I've got 1.8 million. That's fine. I can deal with that. Let's see, 5,000 minus, okay, let me buy the rest from here. You know what, I need a few more charges for myself anyway, so I'm just going to buy another 4,000 flat. Just to save time. But if you want to manufacture them yourself, you can. I've shown you how to do a manufacturing job, I've shown you how to buy the raw minerals off the market. So that ran me about a quarter million isk, but that's fine because he gives me a reward of 207,000 isk for getting this done quickly. So I'm gonna accept and complete mission, and it gives me an Iteron Industrial and 207,000 isk. That completes the business chain. Let's go on to the industry chain. And here he wants a civilian Galente shuttle. And this is not a market item, you must manufacture it. So let's click accept. Uh, it's going to warn you that a shuttle takes up 5,000 cubic meters of cargo hold space. Hopefully we don't need to actually carry one in a cargo hold. Uh, we need 3,167 tritanium, which I have. That's fine. So I'm going to right click, go to manufacturing, pick an installation, click Clelanon, sort according to next free time, three hours. All of the assembly lines are busy for the next three hours or longer. Uh, so if that's the case, when you try to do this, click cancel, click close, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull that same, let's go to Luce trick again. Left click Luce, uh, make sure its assembly lines are clear. Right click, set destination. Uh, right click, add waypoint. Let's close this. Uh, we're going to bring on the blueprint, we're going to bring on the tritanium that we need, and we're going to undock. Now, the finished shuttle will not fit in our cargo hold. So we can't just sit in Luce. No, dock is not what I wanted to do. Where's the Stargate? Here's the Stargate. Jump. So we cannot just simply wait for the job to complete, shove the, the shuttle into our cargo hold. It's going to be 5,000 cu cubic meters. We've only got 400. All right. Oh, that's my phone. What a time for it to ring. All right, so we've only got 400 cubic meters. So we can't actually carry it back with us. But there is a trick to get around that. And I will show it to you.
So here we are, docked in Lusing, or whatever neighboring system of your choice that has manufacturing lines. Right click, manufacturing, pick an installation, Luce, pick an assembly line, use the assembly line, click OK. Uh, looks like someone else grabs that. Uh, let me change the assembly line again, double click, click OK. All right, there we go. Uh, production time, one minute. Oh, that's much quicker than I thought. Uh, accept the quote. Load up the tritanium. Let's undock. Now, we can't fit the shuttle into our cargo hold. So here's going to be the trick. I'm going to right-click this same station, Luce, add waypoint. But let me jump into Clelon. What we're going to do is go back to Clelon with our Imicus, empty-handed, dock up, and we're going to leave the Imicus. Remember when, do you remember when you started the game, all you had was a capsule, and all you undocked in was a capsule? We're going to do that again. It's just a simple matter of docking up, right-clicking the ship, select leave ship, that puts you into your, that removes your capsule from the Imicus, and you're going to undock in your capsule. Your capsule is a full-fledged spaceship with its own warp drive and thruster and able to use stargates. So your capsule can travel around through the stargate network without a ship around it. I don't normally advise that most of the time, but it can be done. And that's what we're going to do here. Besides, if somebody decides to pod kill you, they're going to be concorded anyway. You're just a newbie. You don't have any implants in your head. You don't have anything to lose. Or maybe you plugged in that plus one charisma implant. That's a cheap implant. How much is a limited social? <sighs> Prices vary wildly. But the cheapest I'm seeing is 21,000 ISK. Alright. Dump off the tritanium. Uh, let me dump off the antimatter charges as well, because I'm not going to need... I don't... Hmm. Let me leave it as it is. Right-click your ship. Leave ship. Right-click your capsule. Change name to capsule. We'll close the fitting window, right click the station name, add waypoint, and let's undock. You see, the thing we are manufacturing, it may not be a standard market item, but it is a flyable ship. That civilian Galente shuttle, it is a flyable ship. So you're going to fly it. Here is your capsule. Looks very much like an egg, isn't it? Doesn't it? Hence the nickname for us capsuleers, Eggers. Click the station, click dock. Oh, let me show you something. If you go to Science and Industry, the Jobs tab, the Get Jobs button, and you left-click the job in question, we're not actually in, in the station where the job takes place. If I try to click Deliver, it'll say that I'm missing a required skill. All right. uh, in this case, I need supply chain management to be able to deliver a job remotely. 
right? So by default, you have to be in the station where the science or industry job is located in order to deliver the job or to set the job in the first place. But if you have the correct skills, you can set a job or deliver a job remotely. So you don't have to be in the same station. All right, so if I click get jobs, click the job now, deliver, now I'm in station, now I can deliver this. Uh, by the way, whenever you dock in station where you don't already have a ship, <clears throat> the game will create your race of births rookie ship for you. So it created a Velator out of nowhere. Uh, I don't need this though, so I'm going to repackage that Velator. Right click the civilian Galente shuttle, assemble it. Uh, let's change the name. I like to just call it shuttle. Drag it into the hangar. Uh, drag in civilian light ion blaster, the civilian miner. These came with the Velator. Uh, I don't care too much about it, but anyway. I'm going to undock. Clawlon, on, jump. Station, dock. All right, I'm going to right click, leave ship, right click the shuttle again, repackage, make sure it says repackage, not reprocess, not trash, repackage. Uh, the cargo was that I was carrying was automatically moved out of it. Let's talk to the agent, complete the mission, request next mission. We need to go to an, a place with asteroids, mine it until somebody shows up uh, and tries to ambush us, ambush the ambusher, grab the product, a traitorous production assistant, bring him back to station. So let's see, I'm going to need my weapon. Let me get in my Imicus where I left my weapon. Let's see. Ship fittings. Let me strip everything off of here. I'm not going to use this vessel for the purpose. I'm going to grab my venture instead. Now, I will need a weapon and a minor one. Let me load in the charges. Let me right click my main inventory and stack all because it's getting kind of cluttered. I will need an afterburner. Well, I want an afterburner. I don't need it. Uh, and my armor repair. All right, let's accept the mission. Close on dock. Right-click, empty space, 
Making mountains and molehills. Encounter warp to location. We've got a bunch of Kernite asteroids here. Left click, target lock, and start mining. Now, Kernite is usually the best asteroid ore that you can find in high security space, unless it's in a cosmic anomaly, in which case, Jaspid, Hemorphite, Hedbridgeite are better. Otherwise, Kernite is about as good as you can get, and usually you can only find Kernite, as far as the Celestial Asteroid Belts go, you can only find Kernite in Amarian High Security. Or Amatar or Kanid High Security also counts. But not Galente, Minmatar, or Kaldari. If I show info on the Kernite, it's 1.2 cubic meters per unit and 400 units in a refining batch. So that's 480 cubic meters in a batch that if you want to actually process kernite. Let me switch back to my normal overview tab. And you know what, we can probably pull the same trick again. I'm going to just turn off my mining laser, turn on my mining laser, and keep doing that over and over again until I trigger this ambush because I think the ambush is triggered on cycles of the mining laser and if this doesn't work I'm just gonna be patient and wait until he actually shows up He just showed up. Control left click. Click on him. Shoot once to get it. Ooh, lucky shot. I managed to destroy him from three kilometers. That's not normal. All right, right click cargo container, open cargo. I'm gonna pulse the afterburner, turn off the afterburner, full stop, loot everything. And let's loot everything from the wreck as well. There we go. This module is valued at 178,000 ISK on the market. Interesting. All right. Now, if you want to actually mine out the Kernite, because from a new player's perspective, Kernite is a pretty good ore, you will want to stick around here, or you will want to return to station, drop everything off, drop your weapon, come back with two mining lasers, without turning in the mission, come back here and mine out all the rocks if you actually want the Kernite and you want to refine it. For the purposes of the video though, I'm done. I'm gonna dock up. I don't have enough Kernite to process a full batch, but as far as I'm concerned, that's okay. Only one more mission to go, and we are done with the industry chain. Talk to the agent. 
Docking request accepted. Complete the mission. Request the last mission. And he wants us to manufacture a Navitas. Again, you can look at the bill of materials and see what minerals you need, and you can buy the minerals off the market. All right, the most expensive of these will be the Zydrine. All right, and it will take you one hour and 23 minutes to manufacture this thing. And these are the materials you need. Actually, yeah, I'm sorry. On some blueprints, you may see materials and extra materials. There's a reason for this. When you reprocess something, you get back some of the materials that went into manufacture. Right? Uh, so what's listed under materials is the stuff that is part of the stuff that you need to make a Navitas. And if you reprocess the Navitas later, this is what uh, the numbers under perfect are what you're going to get back assuming you have perfect refining skills. Extra materials are also needed to make a Navitas, but you will not get them back from reprocessing. All right. So to manufacture this is going to need 3,686 tritanium plus 14,270 tritanium. Doing math off the top of my head, I think that's about uh, 18,000 tritanium. But if, you, if a perfect player reprocess it later, they're only going to get back 3,600 titanium. So that's what it means with materials and extra materials. All right, so make sure you have the uh, sufficient total on hand for each of these minerals if you're going to manufacture it. Um, for my case, I don't think I'm going to need Navitas for the rest of the tutorial, so what I'm going to do is just reprocess the one... No, not reprocess. Repackage, repackage, repackage. I'm going to repackage the Navitas that I have. Uh, yes, I will terminate the insurance contract. Uh, and I'm just going to hand that Navitas over to the agent. Yes, I want to. I, I don't need to haul a Navitas anywhere. I'm just going to give him the one that I have. All right, complete the mission. And we are done with the industry chain. Alright, so that concludes this episode. In the next episode, we will get started on the military chain. In the meantime, thank you for watching.